Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today's episode is all about farmhouse black and white decor. Now I do love color as much as the next person, but I always love to have some basic, simple black and white neutral pieces to add to my farmhouse decorating. And that's exactly what I have for you today. If you do like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you do like any of the projects in today's video, remember to hit that thumbs up, but let's make some DIYs. I have a couple of these cutting board signs left over from Dollar Tree's Easter collection. So I am just going to remove the little tacks on here. Now this project ended up taking on a totally different look and feel than what I originally had anticipated. So if you wanted to save yourself some time, you could just tape off the background here and just paint this front portion of the sign. My thought was I was gonna try to peel off the paper and then be able to have a blank surface. And then I thought, well, I'll pull it up, do that and then glue it back on. But as you can see here, when I take this up like it just ripped the paper and everything and so I kind of had to go to plan B so I'm just taking some of my school glue and I'll use a combination of the school glue and the hot glue just to make sure that all of the edges are down really well and I just put some craft paper over the front of this and this is going to become the back of the, my little cutting board sign here so you can see here I've got those different types of glue on there and I'll just lay this down on the paper and then I will just cut all of the excess paper off well first I rub it down there and then I cut all of the excess paper off and then using my emery board I just go around all of the edges and then to get that little hole in the center I just use an exacto knife to cut that out now I have this little block of wood left over it was a tic-tac-toe set that I used in like my valentine five under five and so I'm just using this to replace that little square sign to go on the front so I just paint this completely just in some black I think this is actually chalkboard paint that I'm using and then on my actual cutting board I just give it a couple coats of white paint I like the contrast of the white and the black now I'm going to use this little stencil here but unfortunately Unfortunately, I don't have footage of me doing the actual stencil, but I'm just showing you here that I'm going to go around the edges and I'm going to make this have that enameled look. So just using my sponge tool, I go around all of the edges. And then if you happen to kind of go up over the edge to kind of make it look like it's chipped, I really like that look. So that's kind of a matter of personal preference. So that's up to you. You can kind of see I intentionally do that here. Again, that's personal preference, but I really like the aged look that it gives the pieces. Using a detail brush, I just do the inside of that little circle, cut it on the handle. And I was just showing you that what the stencil looked like after I finished pouncing up and down my paint on there. So I just take some hot glue and I glue this little square onto the front of my cutting board. Now I got this big spool of Buffalo check ribbon on Amazon and it's lasted me forever. I'll leave a link to it in my description box, but I just tie a cute little piece on there and cut some little dovetails. I just love the way this turns out. I think it is so cute. It's perfect for a farmhouse kitchen. And I just really love that design that Dollar Tree came out with for that stencil. What do you guys think of this one? I have a series of frames that I have picked up through thrift stores, flea markets, garage sales over the years. And so I'm taking three of them to do this project with. This one was already kind of a cream colored, but I wanted it to be more of a bright white. So I am going over it with the linen white chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. And I just go through and give the entire frame a really good coat of that to brighten it up. Then I just take a baby wipe and you could use a tissue, anything, and just kind of rub off the raised area of this to kind of expose that through and look aged. Then I'm taking this pink frame. I picked this up at a thrift store years ago. It hung in my daughter's room for a while, but she's just kind of over the color pink now. So I'm gonna make it farmhouse. So I just give this really good, um, it takes a couple coats to cover that pink. That pink was really dark and really bright. So I just go through and cover all of this with the Waverly, this is not Waverly, it's Rust-Oleum Linen White. After I get the desired amount of coats of the white paint on, I take a baby wipe and I use some elephant chalk paint by Waverly and I go through and rub it, rub it and dab it kind of on the raised areas of this frame. This is what's going to age and make this look weathered. And I just go through until I get it how I want that light in some areas, darker in other areas. And then I go back in with the chalk paint and I just lightly brush over the top to kind of dull it down a little bit and make it look like it's kind of that layered look where it is kind of aged in the crevices and everything um, and I just go over this and keep repeating the process until I get what I want 
With this last frame, this frame is huge, guys. I don't know if you can fully get how big this is, but I had to zoom way out. But it is cracked in areas. The print is very faded and damaged. And so it, this is a very nice painting as I was tearing this apart. This is so sturdy, but I had to rip everything out so I could get the print out of the middle. So I just kind of went to town and ripped the back completely off. And then I pried open the little prongs here so I could get the print out. You can see that the print is faded. It's got some permanent scuffs and marks on it. It's just not my style, so I decided that I'm gonna try something else with it. So I do go over this frame. This also took several coats to get it to the desired uh, white color that I wanted, but I just used the chalk paint. And then to age this one, I go through with my emery board and I sand all over. Uh, kind of on the raised edges and then I will kind of go in on the flat parts and I will really kind of scuff it up a little bit. I really wanted this to look very, very chippy. I'm going for just that really chippy white look with all of my projects today. One of my daughter's books had been ripped and torn in several pieces and so I kept a uh, part of it that was still salvageable and I'm using that to cut out some little scalloped pieces. And what I'm going to do is Mod Podge these over the back of the print that was in the picture. So I start by just putting a line of Mod Podge down and kind of spreading that out. This is very simple, very basic. You just take each little scalloped piece and I'm going to place it down. Uh, and that way, and I just kind of go through in layers. I do like this row and then I move on to the next row and get it so it's completely covered. Um, and then I kind of offset the next row. You can see me do that here. So I just lay another row of the Mod Podge down and then go in between the scalloped layers on that other edge. And I do this through the whole thing. I do go over the edges as you can see on the sides and the top and the bottom. And I'll go through and cut those off once, once I'm done. And then after I get this all trimmed up, I do just slide it back into the frame and get it all pressed down in there. And you can kind of see what it looks like there. It just adds a little bit of texture element to it. I am so excited to put these frames in my house. I think they look so great. They're so farmhouse. I think that the chippiness on them is perfect. The aging and the weathering. I really do like how the pages that I cut the scalloped edges out look in the back of that big frame it was rather empty to not have anything in there and I feel like that was the perfect thing to add in there to keep it kind of that really simple clean white look so let me know if you guys have ever done anything with old frames like this down in the comments I would love to know what you guys have done with them if you guys have followed me for any length of time, you might remember me telling you that we had a barn that we had to tear down and we have all of this leftover barn wood, which yay for me, because I have a lot of it and it is so fun to make projects out of. So I'm just cutting, I cut three pieces of the barn wood down to be 21 inches in length. And I found this piece at Hobby Lobby. It was $9.99, I bought it when it was half off, so it was $5 and it's like the half of a milk can. And I also found this stencil at Hobby Lobby, which I thought was so cute, it was $2.99. I'm not sure if the stencils go on sell ever so you could get that at a cheaper price I just paid the $2.99 for it and I just taped it onto the front of this and I am going to just kind of use my little sponge brush here this little stencil tool from Dollar Tree and I'm just going up and down very lightly with black paint all to cover the entire stencil there now I think it's a little weird that the handle is on the front of this piece here too because technically that's not where your label would probably be on a milk can, but it works. <laughs> so I'm just going, uh, like I said, pouncing up and down until I get a feel that the coverage is really good and then I'm slowly just going to remove this. And there were a couple of areas that it did kind of bleed a little bit through, but for the most part, I love how it turned out. I think it turned out really well. Um, 
doing a stencil in the middle I think was a little bit of where my problem lied in, in a couple of those letters you can kind of see where they smudged a little bit just the nature of the slipperiness so I don't know if any Mod Podge might help with stenciling there um, so that just a tip for you there so I thought it would be kind of cute to add a little bit of rust to this but I didn't want to go overboard you guys have seen me do some pretty fun rust techniques with baking soda and a bunch of different colors of paint but I just got out my burnt umber from apple apple barrel paint and I just went over all of like the little rivet areas on this and then anywhere like that I felt would maybe be a natural rust like around the edge of the handles and everything uh, and I just kind of went all over this and gave it a little bit of a touch I even go down to the bottom of the sign here where those little rivets are just kind of adds a little bit of aging to it I kind of wanted it to look like it was an older piece so that's completely optional it's up to you whether you do that and you can see here I do just a little bit of an extra like a bigger rust spot or something I personally like the way that looks but it was kind of fun making it look all old now I glued two of those wood pieces together so now I'm gluing the third and I just used these clamps but when I got the third piece on there my clamps were not big enough so I had to take it out to the garage to use some of our big industrial clamps that we have or bigger clamps I don't know that they're necessarily industrial but they're bigger than the ones that I have in my studio I can leave a link to those clamps down in my description box because I do get asked about those quite a bit. But I wanted to brighten up my wood here so it wasn't quite as dark as it is this barn wood is. But when I got to this middle piece, you can see I got a little heavy handed and was like, ooh, let's, <laughs> I didn't really know what to do. So I just had a baby wipe in my hand and so I just started kind of wiping it. But it was kind of a happy accident because I end up really liking how this technique turns out. Not quite a whitewash because I didn't really like wet the paint down I could have easily done that uh, but somewhere maybe in between so I just kind of go over a little bit heavier on the wood from this point forward and then once I get a few stripes on there I'll just take my baby wipe and kind of wipe over it you can see here I get all of the paint down there I kind of pay attention to get some down into that knot and it's not like full coverage that you're doing here but just a little bit and then as I wipe with it it starts to come up but it also like I'm picking some of it up but it also pushes it some of it down into those really like nooks and crannies I guess of the wood we'll call it and I really kind of like the gray tint that this gives off um, I have a lot of pieces that I've made with the dark barn wood and so I thought it would be kind of fun to try and brighten it up a little bit so I was actually quite pleased with how this ended up looking um, but I'll just kind of just speed this up a little bit and show you here kind of how easy it was and of course you know if you've got scrap wood or you like the way that it looks you know do what's gonna match your decor and what you like the best um, I just like trying new things and different techniques and sometimes you do things and it really is a fail and sometimes like this for in my opinion it was kind of a happy little accident so now we're going to affix the little milk can to our piece here. So I'm using some E6000 because I just wanna make sure that this is held really well and then hot glue for that short term hold. And then this milk can fits on my particular pieces of wood, it fits like very evenly you can kind of see as I turn it over here perfectly on that middle piece of wood there so I could center it really easily so you can kind of measure it out on your wood if you need to and then I just had it not quite to the bottom just up a little bit and I even put my hand inside to kind of hold it down it is tin so it is going to radiate that heat so just be careful now I have this little um, buffalo check ribbon that I thought would be really cute to go around the edge of this just to kind of add a little something decorative on here. I know you wouldn't really have a ribbon like this on a milk can, but I thought it just kind of added that little bit of an extra farmhouse touch. Probably should have done this before I glued it on, but you know, sometimes in crafting you never really get your choice. You kind of do something and think, oh, maybe I'll try this. So it worked out well. I just used a little hot glue on both of the ends and then I'm just stuffing some florals in there. I love this because I can change it up for different seasons. So I can have this up year round, put some fall florals, some Christmas florals, whatever I decide in there, some flags for 4th of July. I just think this turned out so cute. It is going to get so much use in my house and really it was not that much money to recreate but i just love the farmhouse feel that it gives hey guys it's me emily i want to take just a minute to tell you about something really exciting i have partnered with skillshare and i want to take just a second to tell you about them first of all it is because of amazing sponsors like skillshare that i am able to keep bringing you diy inspiration so what is skillshare skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people just like you and me who come together and find inspiration and take the next step in their creative journey 
With Skillshare, you get access to thousands of inspiring classes which are taught by industry leaders and working professionals. I have always loved learning new ways to create, but with being a mom and having a busy schedule, taking in-person classes just has not been an option. With Skillshare, you get to work at your own pace and watch classes on your own time, even in your pajamas if you want. This opened up a whole new world for me and I am able to continue to learn and create on my own schedule. I feel like it is so important to keep learning and growing and creating and Skillshare gives me that opportunity and they want to do the same for you. What sort of classes are available? Well, there are too many to list, but just to highlight a few, you can take classes in woodworking, photography, watercolor, interior decorating and design, organization or self-care, just to name a few. I have recently taken the class Designing the Life You Want for Exercises for Clarity and Motivation from Michelle B. I personally love taking classes like this every month or so just to kind of get a reality check on where things are, make sure my priorities are straight. Michelle is a YouTuber. She is a self-proclaimed goal setting, habit building, and behavioral change nerd. She's fantastic and I love her accent that she has. She's so fun to listen to, but she helps you with intentional living. She helps motivate you, inspires you, gives you direction in life, and who doesn't need that? At least I know that I do. This is such a great class if you're bored, you're in a slump, you're feeling lack of direction or clarity, it helps you figure out what you value in life and what's important to you. Skillshare has partnered up with me to bring you an amazing offer. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description box will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So what are you waiting for? Click that link in my description box for your free month of Skillshare. Let's get back to the DIYs. I love these little buckets from Dollar Tree. They're super cute the way they are, but I'm going to give this one a little bit of a makeover. So I'm just going to use my heat tool to kind of loosen the glue where this twine is to take this twine off. Now my intent was to put this twine back on when I was done, but I ended up doing something else there. So I'm just going to give this a coat of white paint here. You could easily tape that twine off if you don't want to take the trouble to remove it. Um, I'm just going to use this Buffalo check ribbon here. Now this is a little bit wider than that area that it needs to go on the bucket. So I'm just going to fold it in half and rather than cut it and have a raw edge that could fray I'm just going to use my flat iron to use kind of as an iron and I'm just going to uh, go on work in sections and go along the edge of the ribbon so that way it has a nice crease where I want it to be folded now I'm just going to take my aim and flame and I'm just going to burn the edge of this it kind of melts the ribbon a little bit so it won't fray and then I just use some hot glue to glue it down when I get to this edge I do fold it under so that way I don't have a raw edge there or anything and I just use hot glue to secure that these darling rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree are so cute and I love this little one here that has like the little flower market sign on it and so I'm just going to put this onto the front so I just peel the backing off and then lay this down and then this particular I don't know if it's all of these rub-on transfers I usually have a really good success rate with the rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree but you just take like a wooden stick and you're just kind of rubbing over the areas and this one took a little bit of time uh, maybe like 15 minutes or so for me to kind of work with it and it still doesn't end up perfect like I would have liked uh, but just work slowly in sections and I like to use the wood craft tool um, or your fingernail or something to kind of get a good you can see where it kind of peeled up my paint so I've used these a lot and so I was just going off my past experience so I don't know if I didn't let my paint dry enough or exactly what it was but you can kind of see it was giving me a little bit of trouble so just be patient you can go in and lay it back down and you can kind of see when I take it off here the W wasn't so great so I just go back in and I'm just gonna have to touch these little areas up with a little detail brush which is fine that's part of the fun of having it be like a country or farmhouse look is that it doesn't have to be perfect what I'm doing now is I'm just taking my sponge brush and I'm going around the edges to give this an enameled look. I really like the look of the two-tone of black and white together, especially with that ribbon. I do the same thing on the bottom here with this little ring, and then I do decide to go in and make a couple of like chipped areas. So just very selectively, you can get really out of hand with doing this sometimes and overdo it. So just pick a few areas selectively to kind of make look like chipped enamel. I thought it would be a really good way with this transfer to kind of hide any of the errors or make it look like they were were intentional or it was just aged or something so I just kind of very selectively go through and pick a couple of areas to look like the chipped enamel I was pleasantly surprised with how much I like this one with that stencil giving me as much trouble as it did, but I thought this turned out really cute. I think it's perfect for a little touch of farmhouse decor and it fits one of those Ikea plants in it perfectly. 
I have this little oval sign left over from Christmas time and I just used some spackling to cover in that little hole at the top, sand it down, and I'm just going to cover this completely in some white chalk paint. You can totally pick your own colors that match your own decor to do this. With this sign, I don't need this little end part here. It's a little bit taller than what I need, so I'm just using my saw to cut that off. To me, this oval shape looked kind of like an egg, so I thought it would be fun to make like a little farm fresh egg sign out of it. So I'm just going to use my cutting machine to cut out where it says farm fresh eggs here. And I got this from Cricut Design Space, but you could definitely freehand something. You can use the water slide decal paper, uh, print on tissue paper. There are so many different options that you can do and use to get whatever type of lettering you want on your sign. And then I'm just showing you, I have this cute little rooster that is a Christmas ornament left over. It's from Hobby Lobby. Guys, if you're ever looking for something for tiered trays or to have for some little different embellishments here and there, when the Christmas ornaments come out at Hobby Lobby, think of that as you're looking through them. I am just going to cover the back of the sign up, so I'm just cutting some craft paper down to size. I'll take some hot glue and run it all around the perimeter of the sign, and then I will just take my brayer. I do have a link for that down in my description box, and I just roll that hot glue while it's still warm, and it just kind of spreads it out a little bit, and it's going to make that paper stick. Then I just cut it as close as I can, and then I will take my little sander, and I will just, in a slow downward motion, sand around all of the edges, and that backing will look like it was meant to go on the sign, and made for it. So now I just take my cute little chicken and I just put hot glue all over the back side. I'm just going to turn it over and glue it to the top portion of the sign. I decided to kind of have it peeking up over the top there. That is completely personal preference there. And then I just use some tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree to put on either side and sandwich and make a, a little stand for it. And now I just take one of these little egg cartons. I can't remember if I got this one at Dollar Tree or Walmart. You get them either place and, and they come with a bunch of little fake eggs inside of it. And I'm just gluing that to the back of the sign. And then I'm just gluing a couple little tumbling tower blocks onto the bottom of it so it can stand upright. Just put my cute little eggs in there. And now I'm just going to kind of do some embellishing. I like to go over my vinyl with a little bit of white paint in my brush to kind of make it look not so shiny. And then I always go around the edge of my items with not always, but most of the time with a little bit of antiquing wax to give it a little bit of age and embellishing farmhouse look. Look how cute this looks. I'm so excited to put this in my china hutch with these cute little eggs there. I think this is so fun. I love it. I would love to know what you think of this one. This particular DIY, you can use any type of sign blank that you have or anything. I got this at Dollar Tree. It's a cute little glow in the dark sign, but I bought it with the intent that I was going to make it over. So I am just covering all sides and that flat portion, the front of it, all with some white paint. You can use chalk paint, acrylic paint, whatever you have and in whatever color. So I have a little helper here. So my little boy was helping me make this sign. So that's whose hand you see and they're kind of helping me out. So once I get this all the way done, I'm going to take some some painter's tape and we're going to make some stripes on it. So I just lay my painter's tape down and then put one in the middle and then another. That's middle one's going to be my spacer. So it will come off and then I'll be able to place another one on top of that as you can see what I'm doing here. Now I'm going to use the pounce method with some black paint. So I'm just pouncing up and down lightly with a little amount of paint right along the edge of the painter's tape to seal that edge so you're going to have minimal like bleed through from the, the stripes. I don't wait for the stripes to dry completely. I let them um, dry a little bit, but I mean, while it's still kind of wet, I do peel up my tape. And then after it dries completely, I'm going to just distress this a little bit with my little file here. You can use a finger sander or whatever you have that you use. And then I have this sign from Dollar Tree from Easter time. And I really like the burlap, um, fabric here that has the blessed on it. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to make a little pocket on the front of this sign. So what I do is just tuck the little edges of the burlap up like this and then I'm using some half beads to kind of look like some upholstery tacks or nail heads. And I do decide after I get this on here that I wanna stain them or paint them. So I take a little bit of elephant chalk paint. You could just do whatever color. I just felt that the natural wood didn't really kind of give me the vibe that I was going for. And so I just kind of lightly try not to get it on my burlap and go over each of those little half beads. 
To get this on my sign, I'm just putting some hot glue on three of the edges. You wanna leave the top portion open because we're making it a pocket. And so you're just gonna put glue on the sides and the bottom. And then using whatever, like silicone spatula or anything you have because that hot glue does kind of seep through the burlap, you're just going to push that down and make sure that it is on really good. And then you just take some little floral picks, kind of cut them down, take them apart, put whatever you would like to inside of this little sign. I think this is adorable. I actually used this on a tiered tray and I think it turned out so cute. Are you guys on Instagram? If you are, I would love if you would come and find me. I am Farm Charm Chic over there. I'll leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. But come and see what I'm working on. I post there quite a bit. I like to show you things that I'm working on or when I have videos ready. It's just another place to stay in touch. So if you do come find me, remember to send me a DM and say hi because I do love meeting new friends. This DIY is one of my favorite that I've ever made. This is such a fun project. So I'm just using these two ironing board signs from Dollar Tree and also a plunger from Dollar Tree. So I just cut the handle on the plunger down and just cut it to whatever size you want. I did 12 inches. You can do it however big you want this little uh, box to be. And then I'm just putting some E6000 and some hot glue at the top. And that's how I am affixing the plunger's handle to it. And when I did the other side, I did just kind of stack some paint cans up as you saw there. So that way the back end of the sign kind of had something to rest on. Then I just take some painter sticks and this is why I did 12 inches is because it's the exact length of the painter sticks. And I just line them up to make the base to the little box. It's like a toolbox planter that I'm making. And then I'm just using some craft sticks to glue on each side to make sure to give that base some stability and hold those painter sticks together. And then I do just use some wood glue on the edges of the painter sticks. And then I also go in with some hot glue and put a bead of hot glue right along um, where those connect to give it a little extra stability there. So there we go. Then I'm taking this little sign from Easter I had left over and this is what I'm going to use to make the edges of my box. Now this sign, um, it's wide enough that I could do, cut it in half and do half on, you know, one half on each side, but it is a little bit longer than 12 inches. So I do need to trim just a little bit off of the end of each side. So that way I can go ahead and affix this with some wood glue and hot glue is what I use for the long and long-term and short-term hold. And then I just go ahead and place each side on there and let that wood glue dry thoroughly before I move on to the next step of painting it. I forgot to mention that I do go in and put a little bit of spackling in the holes there. This is from where the twine was to hang the sign. And so I do just go in and do this, wait for it to dry, and then I sand it down. This just gives it a nice cohesive flat look and you know, who wants to have holes in their side of their box, right? And then I take some painter sticks and I do cut them down because I don't want the little grooves on the painter sticks to show. And then, so I have to kind of make a joint or a, a seam in the middle. So I use hot glue to place each side down where these meet up. And then I will take some spackling again and put in the middle of this joint. Uh, that way you cannot see the seam. It does give it that seamless look and that way and then I do sand that down after that dries um, and then I do take this out into my little um, spray painting studio my little box I don't know what you want to call this this was just what our sink for our bathroom came in this huge box and it's the perfect place to spray paint because it doesn't go all over my garage or anything so I do just give this a couple good coats of white spray paint you can use whatever color you want to use for yours I just happen to have a ton of white chalk spray paint on hand so you know go figure but that's what I ended up using so just give this uh, completely a good coat all over Now I did cut out with my Cricut some letters to spell the word flowers 
and this is what we're gonna put on the side and you can see I went to try I'm gonna use this as a stencil and I totally did it wrong you have to use transfer paper when you do a stencil I don't know why I forgot that I obviously don't do this that much so after I got my transfer paper on there I just affixed this to the side of my little toolbox here and then I am just going to use um, some regular black acrylic paint and you can see how much I'm taking out of my sponge there you just want to make sure that you're using a little bit when you're doing stenciling this is what helps prevent any bleed through um, of having it bleed underneath your stencil letters and then I just use an up and down motion and I just tap all over each the edge of each letter up and down all the way around and then tap to fill in the middle of the letters just to make sure that I'm getting that nice crisp lines on this And then that so satisfying feeling of peeling this up. I had just a couple of little areas I did have to go in and touch up. Sometimes that happens, it's not a big deal. I do lift up the center of my O and my R to reveal those. And then you do just like I said, go in and do any touch ups that you might need to do or you feel you need to do. I am going to distress this so it doesn't, the touch ups don't have to be a whole bunch. So I just go with my emery board and run it over the top of this to give it a little bit of a faded aged look. And then I do wipe it down with a, a baby wipe just to kind of get all that powder and, and stuff from the paint lifted up there. So then I go with my little sponge brush and I am using just that black acrylic paint and I'm going to give this a little bit of an enameled look or not a little bit of an enameled look. It's going to look a lot like enamel. So I just go all the way around each of the edges um, all over the entire box and cover them with black and then I also do go in in a little areas to kind of give it that little bit of chipped enamel look I love how this box turned out. This will be so fun to either put some little potted plants in. It's perfect for a patio. It's perfect to bring a little bit of greenery or floral inside your home. This, of course, I'm doing patio decor, so this will go outside on my patio or porch. But I just think this looks so cute, so versatile. And guys, it's made from a plunger and two ironing board signs. Like, how awesome is that? I got this cute little sign blank at Hobby Lobby. You can see it was $3.50, but I bought it when the metal items were 50% off. Now I am jumping on the Chalk Couture bandwagon and we are going to try a Chalk Couture stencil. I have only tried one other little teeny tiny like Chalk Couture tag. So this is kind of like one of my first like on my own projects. So I am just taking my little fuzzy mat here and you're going to lay the stencil down on it a couple of times. I'm not even sure I was doing it on the right side of the mat, but it seemed to be oh doing what it needed to do. But you do this a couple times to kind of make the adhesive on the back not super sticky because you do want to be able to lift this off of your surface. So I am just using the Welcome to Our Nest portion of this stencil so I just line that up it lines up perfectly with the sides of my little sign and then I take my black chalk paste and I am just spreading it with my little tool there and I am just going to cover this completely this is very much like screen printing if you've ever done graphics or seen anything like that the same concept here I am just gliding that paste over where all of the openings are of my saying there the welcome to our nest and then moment of truth, I go to peel this up and I, I'm honestly shocked and amazed at how wonderful that works. I mean, look at that. It was so easy. I did speed this up to double time, but other than that, like that's the amount of time it took me to do that. I just love how that turned out. If you do have questions about Chalk Couture or anything, just leave me a message or, or find me on Instagram, send me a DM or something, and I'll get back to you to get you some more information. But I am just taking now some antiquing wax and I'm going around the edge of the sign 
to kind of age this. And then after I go around all of the edges and I focus on like my little holes where the twine will tie, I kind of go through the whole sign to kind of just barely, barely buff in some of the antiquing wax to kind of give it a really aged look. I thought the welcome to our nest was a very spring type of saying. I thought it was super cute. I love that idea that this is just, you know, welcome to our home. Just kind of a fun little take on that. I feel that this sign is going to need something more than just putting that little twine hanger back on it. So I decided to make a scrap bow. Now you can customize this to be whatever colors you want. I know necessarily like these more natural, the blacks and the twine and, and everything are maybe not the most spring type colors. However, this is kind of a neutral decor that does match my house, but you could make this whatever color you wanted, but I'm just cutting about six inches um, off of each of these different ribbons. I even stick a little bit of jute twine in there just anything I can think of. It's called a scrap bow. So you just kind of put scraps of whatever you have in there. And then after I kind of lay these all just at different angles, I just take some twine, I turn it over and I tie that twine off in the back, tie it really tight. And that's what's going to scrunch all of your little scraps together. And then to kind of finish it off, I just take one of the ribbons that I used in the bow itself. And I just kind of glue it around the back and wrap it around to the front to make the little center to the bow. Now I just go ahead and tie on that little jute twine hanger back on the sign so that way I can hang it. And then I am going to glue the bow on in the corner. I did take the time with the bow to trim all of the ends so they had a nice angle to them or a dovetail so and just kind of make the strips of your ribbon kind of match the size of your sign if that makes sense. And then I did decide it does need a little bit of greenery to kind of freshen it up so I'm just taking a couple of sprigs. I believe this is like eucalyptus uh, is what this artificial plant is. It's one of the ones from Ikea that's like four or five dollars so I just took a couple sprigs off of that and just glue one in each side of the bow there kind of sticking out. Out. I feel that adds a little bit of freshness makes it look a little bit more spring like I think but I love how this turned out that chalk couture was so slick and so easy it was so simple and I just think for just a couple of minutes like this is such an adorable sign I have this little wooden box that was a planter box that a potted plant came in and uh, since the potted plant has probably died, let's be honest, <laughs> but I'm going to make this over. I want everything today to be kind of white and chippy, fresh farmhouse with some greenery. And so I'm just taping off the rope handles because I do like those. And I am going to use Rust-Oleum's linen white chalk paint. I do like this chalk paint a lot. I use it on all of the furniture items that I end up painting. I am currently out of my Waverly white chalk paint, so I decided to pull this out and use it. And I, I forgot how much I really do like this. So if you are looking for a new type and you haven't tried this, I highly recommend it. So I'm just going through here and giving this not even a full coat. It's just kind of sparsely putting it on. I'm letting the wood show through. We're wanting this to be very chippy and very weathered looking, but I'm going to do all sides I'm going to do the rim around the top as well. And then I will also go down about an inch at the top. So if you can see into it, you'll still see that white paint. So for the technique I'm going to use here, I actually picked this up from Rhonda over at the Distressed Princess and I am I've never done this before and I was so amazed at how well this worked out. So I'm going to print on tissue paper. So I just cut tissue paper small enough to tape on a regular size piece of printer paper. You actually want it taped like this very well around all of the edges. I will leave a link to this graphic down in my description box. It just came from the graphic fairy, but you just print as normal. You just feed the paper through just as normal so it prints on the side that your tissue paper is on. And I did want to just show you that the painter's tape does peel right off the tissue paper without ripping it very easily. And you can see that it's just, I mean, it looks great printed on this tissue paper. I decided to rip around the uh, uh, print. So that way when I put it on, I felt like maybe it would blend in a little bit more with the wood. So I'm not sure if cutting it would give it the same effect. So you could try either way, but I did just go through and delicately ripped around the graphic here. And I just put my finger there to stop it from tearing up in certain places.
Now I'm going to center this on my box. And what I do first is I lay down some Mod Podge. And of course with Mod Podge, you go to pour just a little bit and like a ton comes out, right? So I just spread this all over the whole box and I am using the matte Mod Podge. And I center this, I eyeball it. You can be as exact as you want on this. And I just lightly press it down with my finger to make sure that it is kind of down. There's no air bubbles, kind of rub those out. But I'm being very delicate to not rip the tissue paper. And then I take my Mod Podge roller that I recently got and I roll over the top of this. And guys, this totally made the difference. It looks like this is completely just printed onto the box. And I do roll over it really well a few times to make sure that is down. And then with the leftover Mod Podge on my sponge, I just go around and get the edges to make sure that it stays down. But look at how amazing this looks. I think that you can't even tell that it's printed on any type of paper and put on there. It looks so good. And if you don't have a Cricut, this is a great alternative. I will leave the link to the graphic down in my description box. These little mini charcuterie or cutting boards from Dollar Tree are darling. They're in their crafting section. I'm also using a crate and then a dowel, but you could also use a plunger handle if you want to grab everything from Dollar Tree. Now, these are the exact perfect size to fit on the sides of one of these crates, and I thought this would make a darling little box. So I'm just using some wood glue on the sides of my crate here, and I'm just going to glue both of those charcuterie boards onto the side of my little crate there so we can make our little box. I like to take my little box I set up up on the table to make sure it has a flat bottom and kind of use my fingers to kind of zhuzh those little charcuterie boards around to make sure all of the lines end up uh, even and everything. And then I just put some wood glue on my dowel and I just carefully slide that in between those. And then I just use a wipe to wipe any excess wood glue off. And then I just kind of press it to make sure everything is good. So I take some little half beads now and I'm just using a little bit of super glue and the wood glue and I'm gluing those on the outside part of where my dowel is. It's going to look like it's covering a little nail head or something. I thought it would be a really cute contrast, completely optional if you decide not to do this part. I haven't yet seen any half beads at Dollar Tree. If you guys have seen anything like that, I would love for you to let me know down in the comments. I do get mine on Amazon. I'll put a link to those down below, but I'm excited and hopeful that Dollar Tree will hopefully come out with something like that fairly soon. I did clamp this together, but I don't think that you would have to do that. I just left it for, to dry for about 30 minutes, but I think without the clamp, you would be fine. But now I'm going to go ahead and paint this. And at first I decided just to paint the entire thing white and kind of start from there and kind of look at it and see what I wanted to do with it. If I wanted to add contrasting colors or do a pattern or anything like that. So just give this a spray paint, or if you just want to use chalk paint, however you want to get this painted, you'll just do your choice. When I did get it all painted white, it was very stark and it needed something. So I thought I would go around all of the edges and give kind of that black farmhouse look to it. I thought this was really cute. It took a little bit of patience just to make sure I didn't get black paint spilled over onto the white. Of course, you would have to go back and touch up if you did that. And then just very carefully, I painted those little half beads as well as the handle on it also. In the end, I really love how this turns out with the two-tone, and I'm really glad that I took the time to do this because it really does kind of make this piece. Now, the sides are a little bit plain, and so you can embellish them however you want, or you can leave them. I'm just showing you what I did with mine, so this step is completely optional. I do uh, use a couple, or just one of the Chalk Couture little stencils here. So when you use Chalk Couture, you just kind of put it on a little fuzzing mat there. It just kind of makes that stencil not as sticky, so it's not going to tear your paint or anything up. And then you just use Chalk paste that they sell and you just kind of put that over with a squeegee it's very much like screen printing when you pull back that the design is revealed and it looks really cute check my description box for more information on chalk couture if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer them for you but just know that you're going to use whatever means you have available to you to embellish yours so it does not have to be like mine this is just meant to be inspiration now i sanded the edges and then i took a little bit of black paint on a baby wipe and i just am running my finger over all of the edges on this and for some reason this is what really made the piece to me i'm not really sure if it just gave it like a defining something or made it look like enamel or what it was but i I really, as I started this, I wasn't sure I was gonna like it. And I fell in love as I was doing this. I thought it really, really made the piece. So inside and out, I just go over all of the edges. And then I even decided to go over the crate, which I wasn't really sure about, but I'm so glad that I did because I do like the definition that it gives and like how it turns out. Now, if this is not your style or you're not loving how this looks, obviously skip this step, but it's totally my style. And I think it really just screams farmhouse and I love it. 
Remember to subscribe if you're liking the projects that you're seeing today. These are some of my most favorite farmhouse projects. The next one that I do is my absolute Dollar Tree favorite of all time. This is very close though. I love how this turns out. So I'm gonna show you from a different couple of angles here, depending on your decor or where you wanna set this in your house, you can set it sideways. It looks super cute at an angle or straight on. Either way with a little plant, you could even stick whatever you wanted in there besides a plant. I love how this turns out and I think Literally, this is one of my favorites. I think it is absolutely beautiful. I hope that you have gotten all of the black and white farmhouse inspiration that you need to start creating. I had so much fun compiling these 10 DIYs together. They are some of my favorites and these all have stood the test of time. They all have been used in my decor time after time. If you did like any of the projects from today's video, remember to hit that thumbs up and I would love if you would consider subscribing if you wanna to get tons more farmhouse inspiration. As always, I would like to remind you to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.